Scientech presents Semtel's technology learning software, basic electrical and electronics. In this lecture, we will study following topics of DC machine. DC machines are the electromechanical energy converter which run from a DC source and generate mechanical power, or convert mechanical power into DC power. Now, we study, principles of DC machine. DC machine, operates on the principle of electromagnetic induction. According to electromagnetic induction, Whenever a conductor cuts through magnetic lines of force, a voltage is induced into the conductor. Mechanical energy, that is, the moving of a conductor across a magnet, produces an electric energy, called as EMF. The magnetic field, composes of lines of force. As the conductor cuts these lines of force, an EMF, or electromotive force is generated in the conductor. The instantaneous EMF, E, is equal to B. The strength of the field L, the length of the conductor cutting lines of force, and V, the velocity of the conductor. Here, increasing the strength of the field, that is, line of force increases the EMF, now, increase in the length of conductor also increases the EMF, and finally increasing the speed of the conductor, cutting the field, increases the EMF. Moving the conductor up to the field, deflects the voltmeter needle in another direction. Moving the conductor down through the field, makes the needle of voltmeter to deflect in one way, which means EMF has one direction. Moving the conductor back and forth, with the field, does not produce any EMF, because it does not cut the lines of force. Current flowing through a conductor away from us is represented by a cross and towards us by a dot. When a conductor rotates at the top of the instance, no line of force will cut and no EMF gets generated. As the conductor keeps turning, number of lines cutting the field increases. Here, at 90 and 270 degree, maximum EMF is generated while at 180 and 360 degree, no lines of force will cut and no EMF is generated. A simple generator can be made, by rotating a coil in a magnetic field, a graph of EMF versus conductor in one revolution, will be a sine wave representing AC. All rotating conductor, produces AC internally. To get direct current, we will attach each end of loop to a segment of copper, forming a commutator. Now it will be a DC machine commutator, which rotates with the loop. Commutator has contact with carbon brushes, by means of which, a voltmeter can be connected. The loop of conductor connected to the commutator is referred as armature. As the loop, revolves the EMF in the conductor, reverse its polarity, connection to the load is also reversed, and current flow maintains the same direction externally. Here, amplitude of output still varies the DC, in the form of pulses. It is the pulsating direct current which is also referred as ripple. This ripple can be reduced by adding more loops and more commutating segments to the existing armature. 
connected two loops of conductor to the armature, provide two outputs, which are 90 degree apart. The resultant curve is still somewhat irregular. By adding more pairs of magnets and loop of conductor, the variation between maximum and minimum values decreases, this, in effect, tends to flatter the DC output. A practical DC machine armature has many loops, wound on a rotor. The field it composes is of many electromagnets. This tends to produce a pure DC output. Let's see, construction of DC machine. These are the various parts of DC machine. Here, two end bells form the housing, that encloses the internal parts. Here, bearing are used to provide minimal friction, between the assembly and the housing. Now, the field is the stationary part of DC machine. A field is usually constructed out of magnetic poles. The armature is the moving part of a DC machine. It moves in the field, to complete the DC machine's, electromechanical energy conversion. Here, the commutator is constructed from a copper ring, split into segments with insulating material, between the segments. Brush is riding against the commutator segments, carry the power of the outside circuit. Here, we study DC generator. DC machine, which converts mechanical energy into electrical energy, is called as DC generator. The source of mechanical energy can be, wind turbine, tidal power, ocean power, biogas plant, hydro power plant, diesel or thermal power plant, etc. Now, we will learn types of DC generator excitation and winding arrangement. The field winding and armature is represented as shown. There are two methods of exciting the field windings of DC machines. Separate excitation and self-excitation. DC machines may have one or more field windings and their method of excitation determines the performance characteristics of the DC machines. First method of DC machine is separate excitation. The separately excited field winding consists of several hundred turns of fine wire and is connected to a separate, or external DC source. The voltage of the external DC source has no relation with the armature voltage, that is the field winding, energized from a separate supply, can be designed for any convenient voltage. Now, when the field winding is excited by its own armature, the machine is said to be a self-excited DC machine. In these machines, the field poles must have a residual magnetism, so that when the armature rotates, a residual voltage appears across the brushes. This residual voltage, 
should establish a current in the field winding, so as to reinforce the residual flux. A self-excited DC machine can be subdivided as follows. First is series excitation. The field winding consists of a few turns of thick wire, and is connected in parallel with the armature. In other words, the series field current depends on the armature current. And in view of this, a series field may be called, a current operated field. In shunt excitation, the field winding consists of large number of turns of fine wire, and is connected in parallel with the armature. Therefore, the voltage across the armature terminals, and the shunt field is the same. And it is for this reason that, a shunt field may be called, a voltage operated field. Now, compound excitation. It involves both the series excited winding and the shunt excited winding. In some applications, a shunt excited winding may be replaced, by a separately excited winding. Here, a DC compound machine, with series and shunt field windings, will be discussed. Now, we study DC motor. DC machine, which converts electrical energy into mechanical energy, is called DC motor. Here, motor action can be illustrated by connecting a power source to a conductor, which is inside a magnetic field. The electric current creates polarity in a conductor. Hence, south pole of the magnet attracts north pole and repels south pole of the conductor. Now, north pole of the magnet attracts south pole of a magnet and repel the north pole. This creates movement, depending upon the direction of steady magnetic field. Now, the movement also depends upon the direction of current flow through the wire. A hanging polarity of a battery conductor, now moves in opposite direction. Here, a conductor is suspended in a magnetic field. Current flowing from a power source creates its own magnetic field, in and around the conductor. This field around the conductor, reacts with the main magnetic field, to cause motion of the conductor either out of the field or into it. A simple DC motor is like a simple DC generator, consist of a pair of magnetic pole, an armature made of a single turn loop, a commutator and the brush assembly. Here, we study about armature reaction. An important problem in the design of DC machine is, prevention of sparking. A position at which zero EMF is generated, is called as neutral plane. Here, current flowing in the armature loops, sets a magnetic field on its own. This field interacts with the main magnetic field and distorts it. This distortion causes a shift in neutral plane and sparking at the brushes. This effect is called as armature reaction. There is two way to maintain the neutral plane in its correct position. First by adjusting the brush position. The other way is by adding interpoles to the field. These interpoles are the small magnets, placed between the main magnets. For more information, please visit our website, www.scientechlearning.com.